good morning and uh, now we will go to the main business of our uh, uh, things uh, after giving three lectures on the uh, reviews covering density theorems and some trace theorems and thing. So, uh, advise you to get familiarized uh, with that work out the problems before start studying the thing. So, let me do before weak formulations. Uh, so, I will do some re inequalities first which are important inequalities and uh, we also do and some embedding theorems some of them recalling basically, but now we uh, do that one embedding theorems. So, we will state some important not that everything will be used. Uh, but eventually it is better to understand that one. So, regarding embedding uh, the idea is that uh, when you have a u in say h 1 and can you get the regularity classically ok. This h 1 h 2 etcetera is also a kind of regularity, but you are dimming in a growth. So, this uh, more and more use are defining in h 1 you are demanding grade u is in l 2. When you go to l 2 h 2 you are demanding not only the de derivatives the second derivatives. So, you are looking for the kind of regularity in the growth space. So, uh, this is the distinction you have to understand the l p spaces are control the uh, the integration on it, but on the the other smooth classes like C, C 1, C 2 etcetera you are looking for classical differentiability. So, these are the kind of both are smoothness in some sense uh, in the generalized sense of uh, when we deal with the PDEs ok. So, you want to know uh, the smooth function the functions in Sobolev spaces are indeed smooth that is one th question you will ask and you have seen some interesting result in one dimension n equal to 1 you have seen you say uh, u is in h 1 of a b that implies uh, u is absolutely continuous you have seen this you have seen absolutely continuous and you have an estimate also. So, and you have an embedding in the sense that uh, h 1 of a b is continuously embedded uh, in c of a b you see. So, one dimension that the distribu existence of distributional derivative and it is in L 2 implies that function is continuous minimum. and you can estimate your the supernorm in terms of the h term. So, the basically you are telling that thing u in c of a b is bounded by your constant into nu u at h 1 you see that is an interesting same kind of thing you are embedding h 1 space into a c of a b space. So, you want to ask such questions uh, for higher dimensions. So, when you go to l 2 uh, h 2 uh, dimensions uh, h 1 functions are not continuous there are examples, uh, but if you go to more and more. So, even the dimension increases you may need more and more bigger smaller h k spaces means more and more derivatives are in these spaces. So, let me write down a theorem all results uh, when it is omega is in r n and all these results you can prove it using again I am stating these results in r n or r n plus where you are able to do it via uh, Fourier transform. So, we want to write say suppose h h s how that one. So, you are assuming s is greater than n by 2 of course, s equal to 1 in one dimension n equal to 1 and s equal to 1 h 1 very well work. So, once you do write that one. So, you want to how far s is away from that after n by 2 you look at all the integers possi possible now negative integer and then you can write anything the remaining part that means your s minus n by 2 is greater than 0. So, you are writing whether there is an integer. So, pick up all this integer. So, k greater than or equal to 0 integer ok and 0 less than or equal to alpha 
is less than 1 but the moment alpha equal to 1 k becomes k plus 1. So, you do that one. So, that is the thing you needed then assume v is in h s of r n these things are little easy to prove. So, of course, it is easy in the sense that then you have lot of results 1. So, let me write uh, then your v is in c, c k of r n. So, you see you get the smoothness up to k whatever you have. So, for example, in this case say c equal to uh, n by 2 plus alpha k equal to 0 you just get continuity. So, if you get n by 2 plus 1 plus alpha then you get c 1. So, that way you can measure the continuity. So, if you goes bigger and bigger k you get uh, the smoothness will also increase like that ok. And uh, 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 what does that mean? Uh, uh, in fact, so you have this thing uh, 2 in fact you have little more ok. In fact, uh, V is in so not C k and you once it is C k means you can define d bar beta of V for all mod V mod beta less than or equal to k. So, you can get some additional information on that. So, these spaces are were defined even in our PDE course ok. C k alpha of R n that is uh, d power beta of V with mod beta equal to k is helder continuous of order alpha helder continuous of order alpha you see. And what does that mean? You have the, uh, the kth derivative d power of v of x minus d power beta of v of y is less than or equal to constant into mod x minus y power alpha. So, you get an thing. And then there are more things 3 d power beta of v vanishes uh, for mod beta less than or equal to k vanishes at infinity. This you have seen it in uh, other cases and uh, so the you also have the embedding in the sense that uh, there exists constant c greater than 0 such that. So, you have an embedding norm of v at c k of r n what is this uh, supernorm? It is the summation mod beta less than or equal to k of supremum of uh, x in r n of no more modulus of d beta of v of x is less than or equal to constant into uh, norm of v in h s of. So, you can estimate that one in terms of the h s norm. So, that means that is h s of r n is continuously embedded in uh, c k of r n you see. This is the uh, this example is precisely a special case of that one. So, you can whenever depending on this how big is your h s you can define that much smoothness that is what we are trying to say that. So, that is one important result ok. So, we will go to the ok. So, with that let me do something more and uh, yeah one more comment similar results are true true for h s not of omega will not prove anything or even for h s of omega if 
omega smooth okay you have that one okay now we are going to derive something very important what are called sobelo inequality as i said we are not going to prove this thing quality so i'll state the results here so let me write it here so when you have u is in w 1 p say of omega say uh, let me do it with r n we will make comments later then you know that that meaning is that u grade u is in l p of r n that you know. So, the, we can ask questions whether you can be in a bigger l p. So, the question is that can this additional information that grade u is in l p will give you u is in some l 2. Can we have u is in l q for q bigger than p? Can we have a but you using the knowledge of uh, thing can we have something and this is what the theorem very important theorem of Sobel of inequality uh, there exists it is a very leading to very interesting problem after these results we will uh, state uh, some additional thing there exists a constant c that will depend only on p and n not on the thing such that positive of course such that norm of u in l p star of r n is you can go up to p star I will tell you what is p star is constant into careful the very important thing is that I do not need even a term of u in l p you can estimate that may not be true for other things. So, you can estimate grade u of l p of r n here ok. So, this is called the Sobelo inequality. So, this in particular implies uh, you are uh, w in particular this is actually slightly weaker than the what I wrote here embedded in l p star of r n. When Im uh, continuous embedding of l p star of r n only tells you that uh, it is enough that u in l p star less than or equal to u in w 1 p. But what this important estimate is that you can estimate only with the derivative at p star ok. And what is p star? p star is called the critical exponent. I will make a command called the critical exponent exponent critical in sense when you study some compact embedding you do not get compactness. Of course, compactness comes in a naturally there will be boundedness of the domain that we may think. So, the criticality comes because of the lack of compactness at p star will p star is begun. So, what is p star 1 by p star equal to 1 by p minus 1 by n. So, that is p star is equal to n p by n minus p. Yeah, I forgot to put a command here. This is the case when 1 less than or equal to p less than n, very important. <laughs> okay. So, you are putting a case here, okay. that is a very important. I will uh, make the other embeddings uh, when p greater than n. So, this is strictly 1 less than or equal to p less than n. Okay. So, this result is true on that uh, thing. So, this is positive and it is also true p star is greater than p ok. So, you can get so you have your p here you can get uh, embedding yeah, so that implies that is our all in l p. Now, you can use interpolation interpolation to get 
u is in l q for all p less than or equal to q less than or equal to p. Star. Of course, for q you may not have an estimate of this form you may need the entire w 1 p norm. Okay. So, uh, so the corollary is this one let me write down the corollary may be I will try to give a quick proof of this corollary uh, w 1 p of R n is contained in L q of R n for all p less than or equal to q less than or equal to p star. So, what do you do write is that ok. So, how do you get a quick proof I do not do the computations little bit, but I will uh, give here. You can write 1 by q is equal to alpha by p that is interpolation if you have the number in between you can write this 1 minus alpha by p star ok with 0 less than or equal to alpha less than or equal to 1. When alpha equal to 1 uh, you get q equal to p when alpha equal to 0 you get uh, p star q is equal to p star. So, uh, you can write this immediately you observe this one uh, if u is in l q you, uh, you that is what you want to prove it ok. You want to prove u is in l q given that u is uh, already know that u is in l p and u is also in l p star. So, how do you write you write mod u minus u power so let, let me not miss anything this one you can immediately uh, see that you can check it this is not surprise immediate right because you know it is in l p. So, if you take p the power of this and uh, it will be multi so p by alpha q the power then you will alpha q alpha will cancel and cancel. You can do the same thing mod u power 1 minus alpha q is in l p star of ok l p star of by 1 minus alpha q ok. So, you are starting with uh, here. So, you are starting with uh, start with uh, u is in w 1 p that is what we are doing it. So, once you have in w 1 p of R n you will get it is in L p and L p star by the main theorem you want to prove this one ok. So, once you have that one ok it is a question of computation and some Cauchy sorts or something inequality. So, you can write your norm u at L q power q you can write down this is equal to integral of u power alpha q into mod u power uh, 1 minus alpha q you see and apply the apply helder apply helder to get mm, this is less than or equal to you get uh, norm u. So, at uh, p to norm powered by alpha q into norm u at p star powered by 1 minus alpha q ok. And then from here you can actually derive which let me this uh, arithmetic geometric mean inequality from here you do it L q is less than or equal to constant into norm u at p plus norm u at p star. So, derive that ok. Once this is there this is less than or equal to this you know that it is grade u that is constant into norm u w 1 p of omega. So, r n so you have your r n. So, you have that inequality. So, one more remark 
we will discuss about Sobolov inequality little more at little later maybe in the lecture. The constant can be taken it may not be the bus constant I will talk about the bus constant uh, maybe in the next class. The constancy appearing in the in Sobolov inequality can be taken as can be taken as n n minus n by n p star depends only on p and n like this constant you can take it uh, uh, may not be the bus constant that is a coming may not be the bus constant. Okay. So, a couple of remarks may be more. Yeah, the results in general are not true for results in general. Result in general is not true. for say w 1 p of omega, but true for w 1 p naught of omega. So, you see when you have a uh, you can in this case when it is in u is in w 1 p naught of omega you can extend by trivial extension of course you have your trivial extension and then you get w 1 p of r n and then you can estimate and you can bring it back. So, for w 1 p naught of omega it is fine or oh, indeed it cannot be true for a w 1 p of omega for example, if omega is bounded if omega is bounded you see then uh, 1 is in h over w 1 p of omega right for which the grade 1 is 0 you see you cannot do. So, the right hand side is 0. So, for you have you see this bounded domains immediately, but for a w 1 p naught of omega 1 is uh, not there. Okay. So, the yeah, so the similar results can be written here for either. that means uh, for u in w 1 p naught of omega. So, you have these results uh, norm u in uh, uh, L p star L p star is less than the equal to constant into norm grade u in L p and norm of u in L q I write it q less than the equal to constant into norm u in w for all uh, q in p 2 p star. <coughs> so, uh, should I do something? Yeah, uh, I have few more minutes. Uh, so, H, so there are more general, so a couple of more theorems let me write it. So, then I can make something. So, yeah, so what happens when p equal to n, when k is when p equal to n. So, what we have done is 1 less than or equal to p less than n. So, when p equal to n and for any domain omega, any domain omega with C 1 boundary with C 1 boundary. So, uh, we have what is that? We have W 1 n 
of omega is contained in LQ of omega for all Q in n to infinity. Make a remark just a note here what how p star is defined. p star is defined as n p by n minus p 1 less than p less than equal to p less than n. When n equal to uh, p equal to n we are getting p star equal to infinity. So, but you do not have the embedding at infinity that is uh, one remark uh, uh, rem uh, remark which you can take uh, one cannot take yeah so it feels according to this the previous theorem it would have been in q from n to infinity including infinity but you cannot take q equal to infinity and there are examples I will not do here, but you can work it out. Example say for take omega is equal to b 0 half, I will just uh, state here and you can take u x equal to uh, log log 2 by mod x or something like that or minus whatever it is. This is this is not a continuous thing, it is not L infinity, not in L infinity. Okay. But you can actually prove that u is in H1 of omega. This you can work it out for exercise. Okay. So, maybe one more the final result, uh, one more uh, theorem what happens when p greater than n when p greater than n greater than n p greater than n so all cases you are getting it p greater than n what you get it and then uh, omega c1 uh, c1 boundary c1 means with c1 boundary then w 1 p of omega. Yeah, so, you need that p the growth to be bigger to claim it is in L infinity of L infinity you see. So, at p equal to n you do not get the point wise estimate okay. and you have some nice thing depending on how big it is you will get u x minus u y you can have some error estimates less than or equal to constant into mod x minus y power alpha into norm of grade u at L p where your alpha is equal to 1 minus n by p. So, you see, so you get some extra things here depending on that you get that one and uh, uh, should I do this one say for example let me write it so that I do not have to continue on this embedding theorems uh, example for n equal to 3 uh, maybe I can actually state maybe I will skip here. So, I will continue little bit because it may take little more time. So, uh, we will continue in the next lecture. Okay. So, I let me show. So, I will state one more theorem what happens to what happens uh, to w m p of omega what happens. So, I will just state so that it may be useful to you at some point of time when, for when w m p. So, this is there is a nice interplay between so m represents the number of distributional derivative p represents the growth. So, there is uh, uh, when it is more and more 
it will naturally produce you the smooth function. So, so the you can increase either f m or you can increase p to get the smoothness. So, there is an interplay between m and p to get the smoothness. So, I will state that theorem as well to get the smoothness and then I will continue little more in the next couple of lectures. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.